Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Shelly Geigel with JNS Hobbies and Crafts and today's tutorial is how to make this very large album using the Heartfelt Creations Climbing Clematis Paper Collection. Now this album measures finish size about nine and an eighth by eleven inch and the spine is about two and a half inches. And this is made for a beginner so if you've never made one before this is step by step really easy and also if you don't have die cuts if you don't have paper punches to make decorative trim you don't have to those of us that decided to use some we add that as we go along so this is what I came up with for the cover and the spine looks like this I'm going to try and keep this in frame. It's such a large album. And then on the back we have this. So let's take a look at what we're making today. So first we go into page one and this is a magnetic flip. And up here there is a place to either the journal or just place a photo. Up front are two fold outs and I have some picture mats. These are little pockets up front. Once we open that up, we have places here for photograph. And then we have two pockets. And I put some picture mats in there. And just kind of slide back in. Get in there. <laughs> and it just kind of closes all back up. Over here on page two, we have a very large flip. And there's a place right here if you'd like to frame a photograph. We're going to open that up, and there is a very large space up here. You can probably get two photographs here, depending on the size. And then we have just a very large pocket to place picture mats. Going to page three, we have a very large pocket in the back, and this is a very large picture mat. And right in right here is a little independent pocket that you can kind of slide your pictures and maybe stack them if you have more. Page four, this is a magnetic flip. So this flips out, and we have a little pocket here. And over here, I think you can see that. We can just flip that up. There is a place for a photograph. You can place a photograph here as well. Right up here is another large flip fold out page. And I just placed a large picture mat in there. It's tucked back behind this little tag. And then that opens up, and we have another pocket in this big open area. This page, page five, we just left alone so you can place some photographs in there. And there's a little tag if you'd like to do some journaling. Over here, we have a little booklet, and this will open up. But we made it so we can also slide some photo mats back behind. And you can also frame them in there if you wanted. Or put one like this, keep one on the mat, and kind of step ladder them. So this is magnetic and it opens up. And we did finish off on the inside here to place a photo and it's optional if you wanted to place any decorative paper or solid colored cardstock in here. But there's plenty of places for photographs. Now this page is very heavy. It's got quite a bit in here. We have a large fold out and I have a picture mat in that pocket, a couple tags. It folds out and then there, you, there's a place right here for photographs. That folds out and we have another inside pocket. We, over here we have a tuck and I just placed a photo mat in there. And right here is kind of fun. What we did was we created this folder and it actually kind of slides back behind this band that we created. And you can also store picture mats back there as well. 
And then we have this huge, large side pocket for more picture mats. Last page, we have this really fun pocket that we did. And I just have a, quite a bit of picture mats in there. But that's what it looks like. And some tags. So that's what we're making today. Let's move on into the materials list. Let's go over the materials list really quick. What you're going to need is one of the Heartfelt Creations Climbing Clematis Paper Packs. And there are 24 double-sided sheets. And this is the 12 by 12 size, so only one. Next, you're going to want two pieces of medium weight 12 by 12 chipboard. It doesn't matter if it's black, craft, or whatever you have. It's going to get covered up. Tyvek, you're going to need a couple strips of Tyvek for the binding. And Tyvek, all it is is a material that is very hard to tear. And I sell these in the large envelopes. So then you just kind of cut your strips off. I'm going to be using the American Crafts white 12 by 12 cardstock, and it's an 80 pound. You'll need one pack of basic gray magnets. These are the large magnetic discs. On the cover of our album, we're going to be using the Prima. It is the Chantilly Royal. It's a Frank Garcia design, and it's like a resin frame. Also, I'm going to be using the Tim Holtz Baroque frames, and I only need one. Two come in a pack, and they're inexpensive, so just one. And you'll have one left over from the package for another project. Two of the 3 8 score tape. You'll want some art glitter glue, the one that dries clear. Mine is very well loved and I refill this all the time. But if you get this, you'll also want to get that metal tip here to go on to help with precision uh, gluing. Okay, let's talk about optional things. Now you can, you can do uh, packaged flowers. Me, I went through my stash of leftover die cuts and I am going to be using handmade flowers. Now, if you're wanting to learn how to do handmade flowers, I do have a couple tutorials. So if you go on my channel and just type in uh, flower making, I think a couple videos will pop up to help you out there. It's very simple. Also, inside uh, my flowers, I use the prills. And this is lemon chiffon. It's just where you put glue in the center and then you put a little bit of prills and you can do that. If you need flower stamp and dies, I have them in my store and I'll put links down there. For my leaves, now some of the already made packaged flowers, they come with leaves, especially some of the newer 49 and market ones. But for me, I am going to be stamping with the leafy accents and die cutting with the leafy accents die and I'll be coloring those in. A lot of my flowers have the glossy accents on them and what this does is stiffen them up. Here's one for example. It has it on it so it's kind of stiff even uh, this has been done a while ago, but it's stiffer and it helps keep the, the shape. Optional. This is the new Heartfelt Creations Classic Companion Border. And I, I showed in the what's new, but um, I'm going to be using this. And this will give me several different styles of die cuts for my trims. And I'll be playing around with that. Do not have to have any punches, stamps, dies. You don't have to have any fancy trims in yours. And I just want to make that clear because sometimes people look and say, well, I don't have that equipment. I don't like die cutting. Well, you don't have to. Really quick equipment. I almost forgot to show you this. Things you're going to need are, you're going to need a pair of scissors, pencil, eraser, your scoring tool, bone folder, ruler for sure, craft knife is handy, you're going to need a scoring board and a paper cutter. Okay, let's get started building the base album. We're ready to move on to making the base album and on your pre-cutting list, it has your different sections in order. So the first thing for cutting would have been our base album and it told you to either cut on your chipboard, Tyvek, or your cardstock. 
So let's begin. I've got my scoring board here. And the first thing on the pre-cutting guide said to cut two nine by 11 inch pieces out of your chipboard and we labeled those cover. Next, whoops, we got a two and three eighths by 11 inch spine and that was cut with our chipboard as well. And in the instructions it did say to lightly label your pieces. It'll be easier for us to, when we're ready to grab pieces to assemble. The only thing we did not label were our two pieces of type back and those were cut at 1 inch by 11 inch. And we, it's hard to label on these with pencil because of the type of material it is. The rest of our pre-cuts are done on our white cardstock and what we had were just two pieces of 12 by 12 cardstock white and we called this our album wrap. We had one piece that was four and a half by ten and three eighths, and we labeled this inner spine cover. There's no scoring on that. Next, we cut two pieces that were eight and a half by ten and three eighths, and we called these our inner covers. No scoring on these. Our last pre cuts were three pieces that were nine and a quarter by ten and three eighths, and we called these our inner pages. These are the ones that we scored. And what we did on each one of these is we laid this on our scoring board. So we are nine and a quarter inch across. On each one, we scored at five eighths. That's all for now. Let's get started here. And the first thing that we're going to work with are our two 12 by 12 album wraps. And what we're going to do on one of them, we're going to lay a piece of our 3 8 square tape right here along the edge without going over. If you go over, you're going to want to snip off anything. Most importantly, what we're going to do now is we're going to burnish and that just gets all the air out from underneath your score tape. It helps it make contact with your paper. And then what we can do is turn it over and clip off any overhang. There we go. I think that's good. Now the idea of this is once I remove the score tape backing is I am going to overlay it just right over that score tape. For me, I'm not so good at keeping things straight, so I do need a little help. And what I do is I just grab my paper cutter. It has this paper guide up here. If I lay one down and push it up against the paper guide, that'll keep that straight. And when I lay this one down, it'll go up against the paper guide as well, and then I can overlap. So I'm going to use my craft knife, which is very handy for me, and I'm going to remove that score tape backing. And I'll just place that under my little guide there. And I'm going to shimmy this over and place that up and make sure I get it over that as best I can. And kind of guide it down. That just helps me. If you have a different way or you can just lay yours down and it's all good, that's great. Me, I need help. So now I'm just burnishing. So because our chipboard and I'm going to grab our chipboard covers and the chipboard spine. The spine is going to place directly on that seam so it's even right in the middle there. The thing is is this is a very large album. Our cardstock is only 12 inches high and we're and this piece is 11 inches. Usually I like to have about an inch here and an inch here but obviously that isn't going to happen. So I do need to be careful of allowing myself the half inch and half inch, especially on this one when we're wrapping. So I am just going to kind of move that right in the middle. I might grab my ruler to make sure I've got that half inch correctly. 
and maybe make a little pencil mark down here. And then my half inch should be up here as well. So now I know where this piece is going to lie and I'm first gonna get this. So this is gonna be one of those things since we're, we don't have a lot to wrap over, we're gonna be very careful with this. So first things first, I am going to grab my score tape since I've got my mark here. And what, what I'm gonna do now is I'm using score tape. And what I'm gonna do is go all the way around like a picture frame with this. Now for this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put two of my 3 8 score tape right down the middle, and that should be plenty for this side. Let's grab our tool and burnish. Burnishing is so important. I know I already said that, but um, score tape can lift if it gets dried out underneath. So I have this, so this is very important. Here's my mark, and I'm gonna make sure right in the middle somewhere of this, that's a little off, but you know what I'm trying to say. Somewhere in the middle of that is going to be on that lip there. What did I get? Got something there, but it'll get covered up. So right there, and I'm gonna make sure that I am straight there's that, and I don't want to get my head in the video, but I think that that's about straight, and I'll press it. That looks good. Okay, I'm going to move this out of the way. It's a very large piece, and I'm going to grab my 9 by 11 covers. Now, what I do on one, I'm going to do on the other. First thing, we're going to go around the outside like a picture frame with our score tape. Now that I have that, I'm going to go one down the middle. And we do have a frame that's going to sit on top. So I think what I'm going to do is space out two of these 3 8 strips right in here. And I think that'll be fine. Okay, let's do the same for this one and then we're going to burnish. I'm finished with burnishing and I'm gonna grab this back out. Now here's something very important. You need to have an appropriate spacing before you place this down evenly. Evenly making sure that these are going to match up, the bottom of this and this. We want on this one about a quarter inch. So if it's easier, take your ruler and make a pencil mark where the edge of this is supposed to lay. And I'll do the same over here. If you want to just eyeball it, you can. I usually do. So, I'll remove the score tape. And if you want to shoot in a little glue there, you can do that. I think mine is fine without any. But I'm going to lay it, so I'm right on that line. And then I'm going to place it. And when I place it, I'm going to watch the bottom to make sure it is going straight. Rather than a little cattywampus, where it's uh, not as much, because we don't have a lot to wrap. I'm going to remove my score tape backing and then I'm going to place this. One of the biggest tips I can give you with working with score tape is wash your hands before handling it. Get all the lotion and oils off your fingertips so that you don't lose any of the potency of that. So I'm just going to take my time here. I'm just going to kind of lay it down, make sure I'm even at the bottom. I've got that correct. And going across. And I think that that is pretty good. So I got that one down. And I'm going to remove the score tape backing on this and place this one. Okay, make sure I am straight. And one way too is you can place your ruler down like that and just kind of bring it down to the bottom. And I did okay. Okay, we will be burnishing on the other side, but let's keep going with what we got here. Let's grab our two Tyvek pieces. Um, once again, move this out of the way. And for this, 
let's make it real simple. Let's just do a line of score tape down this side and then that side on both pieces. Now our Tyvek is very crinkly. It likes to get away from you. If you get any crinkles, don't worry about it. If you have one with a seam, you can always glue it back down the little overhang or just leave it. It's not going to go anywhere. And you're definitely not going to see this. And like I said, if it's wrinkled, it's okay because it does get covered and we do burnish down as best we can. There's one. And now all right, we can grab our pieces. What I'm going to do is remove the score tape backing and then I'm going to place it evenly over our spacing. So one will go right here and one will go right here. Now we had called out for an 11 inch long piece. I didn't, I was short from being 11 inches. Okay, you will see that. So I don't quite reach the top and bottom of my chipboard. I'm not going to worry about that. The job of the Tyvek is to hold the binding together in case something were ever to happen. It's not going anywhere. So I'm just going to place this evenly over. If you were able to get 11 inch long piece, I was working with my leftover Tyvek and I did not quite have enough and I did not want to um, cut into a new envelope. so. I'm going to use what I got here. Now this can go on a little bit crooked. It doesn't have to be exact because it does get covered. As long as you're over that, it's good. Okay. Time for this one. Come here, you. There we go. I had a little wrinkle. I'm just kind of burnishing down. Okay, so what we're going to do now is start working our edges a bit. So I'm going to go in, start from the side, and just start bending it to help it. Just with my hands is fine. So I did that side. And we're going to have more over here and here, and it doesn't matter. I could have had us cut down the, the length, but I thought it was just easier just to go 12 by 12 and be done because it does get covered up. Okay, now up here you will notice you have a seam. And a lot of times when we're wrapping on that seam, you'll get a little bit of splintering when we're done wrapping. It's not a big deal and I'll show you how to correct that. So sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. What I like to do is start in the middle, there's my seam and slowly just do a little at a time because this is a very long piece as well and we're just going to pull it up and you, as you can see we have just enough to get over that so I'm going to start working a little work it first just get some bends and then you can bring it over just to help it out a bit and mine looks very wavy after grabbing it, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. It'll be okay. So I'm going to flip this around and I'm going to start doing the other side. A little bit at a time. All right. So I've worked all that and I can push it back now. Now what we're going to do is take our 3 8 inch score tape and it should be just enough to get on this. And I'm just going to go a little bit past the side here because this part will get clipped off so that we can make a nice edge. Just don't go over here. We're just going to start going around. We'll go here and then we'll go here and around here and then we'll stick a couple strips here of our square tape. So by the time you are done, you'll have a strip here, here, and two along the sides. I think you can see that. Now our job is just to burnish to get that tape to lay down 
totally against our paper, get out any air from underneath. You're going to need your scissors for this next thing. Now, what you're going to want to do is you're going to snip at an angle. Now, you don't have to measure, but what, as far as to be correct on this, just kind of cut at an angle. But what's most important, and I'm going to bring this up, you see where the corner of our chipboard is? You're going to leave a 1 8 inch spacing. So let me show you that. So as you can see, I left 1 8 out away from the corner. And we're going to do that with each side. You don't need to keep these corner clippings. These can go in the garbage. We are ready to begin wrapping. And I'm going to start with the top to wrap it over. And I am going to, ah, this is so large. I am going to peel back some of this on the sides. I'll get to wrapping that in just a bit, but don't jump ahead because we do need to do our corners to make them fold in nice. So the first thing I'm going to do is be mindful of where that seam is. I'm going to start here slowly. And work it. Now I'll be smoothing that down. I'm just going to kind of work it in sections here. There's not a whole lot to grab over. Usually I'd like a good inch to have. Now if you get a little bit of splintering, and it looks like I did get just a little teeny bit of splintering right there, I'll fix that. It's not a big deal. I really believe that that has to do with something with the grain of the paper and how I, I put it down, but it's not a, a killer of your thing because you can fix that. Okay, I got the top done. We're going to do the bottom same way. All right, it is time to take off the sides, all the score tape sides. Grab your, your tool. And what you're going to do is place one hand here on your chipboard. If you can get a finger down on this flap, that's great. That helps to keep control. Now, with the side of this, I'm going to right up against the top and I'm going to go around like I'm going around a corner. Whoops, just like that. Over here, again the same thing, put my hand here, put one down here, and I'm going to round the corner. What's going to happen here is you're going to get where it kind of folds itself in a little bit. And that just helps from not getting the pokies, real sharp pokies there on your when you're done wrapping. So now all I need to do is fold this over. And then we will burnish. And that's all there is to it. So we'll do that again together. Move this out of the way. And I am right-handed, so I am going to flip this around. It'll make it easier. Here's my corner. Put my hand, one here, and I'm rounding the corners. Okay. Same thing here. Trying to hold that down, and I'm rounding the corner. Once you have that, we'll fold it over. Now, one thing is folding it over. Don't hug really tight. You just want to fold it over so it lays nicely. We will worry about any shards on that little seam as soon as we are done putting this together and when we move into decorating the outside. We'll take care of it then. Let's grab our four and a half 
by 10 and 3 8 inner spine cover. And all we're going to do is we are first, before you do anything, this should reach just to the edge to cover. So when we place this, you will want it to make sure it covers the edges right here where the black chipboard makes that. It should just cover. And when that happens, you'll have a, enough headroom here and down here. At the end of the tutorial, we will be needing that headspace for reinforcing our page hinges. So first things first, this is the most important piece, well one of the most important pieces to this. And this we will first go all the way around like a picture frame with our score tape. But then we are going to lay strip by strip all the way across next to each other. This whole thing is going to be completely covered with score tape. And for those of you that are new and haven't made mini albums or haven't made very many, the reason why is when this goes down, and you'll want to place it on the side with your pencil, when this goes down, this is what your page hinges are going to attach to. And not only that, is when this is completely down and covered, when we go to pull in our sides, it will pull in nicely. It'll all be laying down flat for you. If you use glue, you risk the chance of having little pockets of glue that are not completely covering so that when you do lift it, after using glue, you may see bubbling, your paper buckling in. And we don't want that. So score tape right here is always a must. So let's begin. Score tape around the outside like a picture frame. Then we will fill it in with our score tape. If by the time you get over here and there's just maybe a little, uh, a little bit of cardstock showing, if you have quarter inch, you can put in there, or you can still use this and overlap onto your other score tape. That won't hurt nothing. All right, let's burnish that down really good. I've got mine completely burnished, and once again, I'm going to be very careful when placing this. And we'll place this together. I'm going to remove all the backing, and I will meet you at the book in just a moment. I have all the score tape backing off. I'm going to make sure that this goes over evenly over my Tyvek, it covers it, and most importantly, I'm going to look to make sure I am covering. And we'll have just enough to cover that edge down there. Try to get this on straight as I can. Okay, let's make sure this is all down. Okay, so this is what we have. Now it's time to close our album. You'll find it's very stiff. You're going to want to put your hand right on that spine. Take your other hand, place it down near the spine, bring it down, and slowly lift. As you can see, this is what I'm talking about. Because we use score tape and we burnished it, you're not going to get any bubbling from the pressure of this folding. And this is not made to be flipped all the way over. We're only going to go up so far and we're going to stop. So I like to place my hand right there. And when I hit it is when I'm done. And it's a slow process. Your album is going to be stiff to start. And this will relax. So, so. I'm going up about this far, it's hitting me, and I'm good. So next, I'm going to put my other hand here, my right hand. I'll slide this one back underneath and do the same thing, slowly. Until it hits. So you go up at a little bit of an angle, but not much. So you can see we have a pretty flat area. It has not bubbled up from not having any adhesive. Next thing we're going to need is our two. It's eight and a half by ten and three eighths. They're our inner covers. And what's going to happen here is you can see where that hinges. 
This makes it cover your imperfections, I guess, which would be your chipboard, your, your corners. And so if you were to place this up and you could see where that hinge is, the purpose of this is to come down. It should line up with your inner spine cover. So down here, they're the same size. And you can line it up and you will have a gap between the hinge and the edge of this. But you won't be going over the side. You should still be able to have room. And this cleans it up and looks good. So when you place it, you see here you can see some of that? This is not on straight. So I would be maneuvering this so it's straight across the bottom, lined up, and then that should cover up anything. That should show. So make sure your cut is accurate. If for whatever reason you just cannot seem to cover up any of the black, you may want to recut this to an eight and a half by 10 and a half. And it will be taller than this, of course, but at least it will cover. And by the time you're done, you will not be able to tell when we get our papers and stuff. So if you need to recut a different size, you can, and that would be a 10 and a half rather than 10 and 3 eighths. So I'm gonna check this side, make sure that this is going to cover, and it should, and it does. Okay, on the side that I wrote on is the side that I'm gonna put my score tape. So I'm gonna go all the way around like a picture frame, one down the middle, and I think I'll do two on each side there. And then we'll place these together, and we'll do the same on this one. Once you have all your score tape down, let's burnish. I have both of mine burnished, and this is where I'm gonna be double checking before I do anything, is placing this down, kinda looking to see where I need to be. If, to cover everything, if you need to make a pencil mark, maybe you know this is how far I need to come over. Um, you do have this to line up with, but most importantly is you have to keep it straight because if you go on a little off, you're not going to be able to cover. So I'm going to remove the backing and then I will meet you back at the book to place this in together. Got the score tape backing off and I'm going to do this very slowly and make sure I'm lining up at the bottom and I'm straight across the bottom and I'm not on that hinge. And I think that this is good right there. Looking good. Now I'm gonna do it over here. And that looks pretty good to me. Let's set this off to the side. And we're going to grab the last pieces. These are our inner pages. And I only labeled one. And I'm going to fold on the score lines and burnish there a little. Now we have five eighths of spacing in between rather than the half inch. And this is just to give us a little more room in there for this design. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do first before we do it. So after we get our adhesive on here, which I will show you in a moment, what's going to happen is, do you see where your hinge is if you were to pull this up? This first one, it lines up with your inner spine cover and also these. But if I pull this up and I place this right against there and keep it even with the bottom of the spine cover, it'll go in just like this, very easily. So let's get these and then the rest fall in line. That's the other ones are even simpler. So with all of these, with the peak up, we're gonna grab our 3 8 score tape. And I'm gonna move this out of the way because it's hard to see white and white. I think you could see this a little bit better. Here is my peak. I do not wanna get score tape on that peak. So I'm gonna go right next to it 
and you will notice we still have some white cardstock here. I am, you can use quarter inch in there if you have quarter inch score tape, or you can use your 3 8 and just overlap. And I'm gonna demonstrate that for this one. Okay, let's grab our tool. We're gonna burnish that down really good. And now we're going to inspect our piece. We're going to flip it over, and if you can see any score tape peeking over, you definitely want to get that up. I'm pretty good there. So there is my first one. And now all we have to do is get our score tape on these the same way. So let's do that. All right, I have all the score tape on, and I've inspected, made sure that there's none peeking over. And I'm going to go ahead, and I did do my burnishing. So now I'm just going to remove the score tape backing here. Okay, so the sticky side is down. I'm going to pull this up and I'm going to bring this even with my spine cover at the bottom. And I'm just going to push it right on up against that. I think about, let's see, right about there. Can't get any easier than that. And I'm going to burnish down this way, and I'm going to burnish this way. Now I'm going to erase this now because we're going to be labeling our page numbers and all that. So there's our first one. So I'm going to show you what we're going to do with the second one. Here is my sticky part. It still has the thing on. I want to show you first. So easy. You're just going to put this right up next to this one that we've folded over. Line it up and it's down. So here it is. I'm just going to line it up, top and bottom, and I think right about there. So that's how easy this is. And then we burnish down. And they should fall in line for you. Okay, last one. Same thing. Up against, line it up and press. And as you can see, we have some pretty even spacing in there. Looks good. We are now moving on to decorating the outside and we will also go over any splintering that you may have. As you can see, mine has a little bit there. And we will fix that. Decorating the outside of our album. First thing, we're going to address any splintering. So if you've got glue on your fingertips or anything like that, please wash your hands and make sure it's clean. We are working with the white cardstock. So take a look at where it has splintered here and which way it's supposed to fall. Mine is going to be wrapped this way. So all I'm going to do is dab a little bit of glue right there. Not a whole lot. I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to roll it over and then I'm going to tap once or twice and then I'm going to leave it alone. So down here I'm going to take a look and I'm going to do the same with that. If it looks like it's starting to, you definitely want to correct that. So I've got a little glue there. I've got it where it's splintered. I'm going to roll it over and I'm going to tap it once, twice, be done. If you keep tapping it, what is going to happen is it's going to stick to your finger and then it's going to uh, tear. So if you need, if you didn't get it the first couple taps, let it dry, do the procedure all over again. But now you are fine. You should have uh, your spine up here and here or any splintering. Okay, we are ready. Let's see which way my album goes. I have the thing right here. Let's work on decorating this outside. And I'm going to move this out of the way and I'm going to get into our decorated paper. In your paper pack you will find this gorgeous print. And on the back it looks like this. 
The first thing we want to do is put this on our paper cutter and we're going to take off this trim piece. So my blade is right over here, so I'm just going to do that. We do not need to save these. I'm just going to put that right in my trash. Now one thing about my tutorials is we do start off very slow so that people can kind of get used to the way I teach and have a moment to kind of process everything. And then when we get into part two, we can usually kind of pick up the speed just a little bit when it comes to like pocket uh, assemblies and folding on score lines and all that good stuff. One thing about my tutorials is that I try to stay consistent on how I tell you to measure. Now, what I mean by that is I will always say start here and measure over this way. That way, I'm not having you measure down, up, over, all around. You can know that I'm going to start here and I'm going to measure over this way. Now, to get a certain cut, I may have us turn our paper sideways to look at it like this, but I'm still going to say to measure over starting here and measuring over this way. So you'll want to see how I'm holding my paper. So our first cut, what we are going to do is we're going to turn it sideways so that the fence is over here. We're going to measure over 10 and 7 eighths and cut. So 10 and 7 eighths. And we'll see how that works. Now anything that falls off the side of your paper cutter, we're going to stick that in reserves unless I say hold it off to the side. But for now, we're going to stick this into our reserves. All our reserves is is our scrap pile. I'm reserving it to use at a later time in the tutorial. So we'll keep a pile of that. So now that we have that, I want you to turn this completely upside down. We're going to measure over this way, eight and seven eighths and cut. And seven eighths. And for now we will stick this in our reserves. I'm gonna put this off to the side, grab my album and I'm gonna show you what it looks like. So I cut this shorter than what we actually have so that we can get a nice white border around this. So if you were to place this down and center it, you will see that there's going to be a white border at the top, the bottom, the side, and over here. And that's exactly what we want. So we're gonna flip this over. Oh, that print, I hate to even use this sheet. It's hard to cut into paper sometimes because both sides are beautiful. But no worries. We're gonna do what we're gonna do here. It'll look really good. So score tape. Score tape is going to go around the outside like a picture frame to start. Okay, next we're going to go one down the middle. And this is our cover and we do have a resin frame sitting on top, so we are going to go two on each side of that. And I, Let's get our tool out, whether you're using something like this or this, it doesn't matter, let's burnish. Okay, I have burnished. Now before I do anything, I am going to open this up and we're going to give a good burnishing to this side first. Sometimes you can actually hear crinkling under your paper and that is pretty much you were ironing out and getting out those air bubbles. All right. I am going to remove the score tape backing. But what I'm going to also do is get my glue ready. And what's going to help me is after I remove the score tape, I'm going to run some glue right along the bottom a little up. That is going to help me for when I do start placing this, that it, in case I get it on a little wrong to start, it will help me maneuver it before the rest of the tape goes down. So if it's easier for you, because this is a very large piece, and you want to get this on pretty even, what you can do is lay it down and take a peek, making sure it is straight, straight on the sides, and then you can always use a, a little bit of pencil that you can erase and just kind of put a little pencil mark to show you how far down you need to be so that when you're placing this it goes on pretty straight. 
Okay, I'm going to remove the backing and then I'm going to squirt a little glue down here. And then we will place this together. Okay, here we go. And I'm just going to do this real slowly. I'm going to look side to side to make sure it's fairly even. I'm going to look where that pencil mark is. And you know what? I'm not going to sweat it if it doesn't go on exactly even. I'm really not. Okay, I'm going to open it up and I am going to burnish. So I didn't get this on quite as even top and bottom as I wanted to, but it's going to look okay. All right, let's get the back on there. And I'm going to find our paper for that. All right, I found the paper that I would like to use on the back. I'm going to put my album off to the side and get my paper cutter out here. In your paper pack, you will find this. And on the back, it looks like this. Very pretty. Let's take off that trim piece. Okay, let's turn this sideways. Measure over 10 and 7 eighths and cut. So here's my blade, and this is an absolutely gorgeous leftover piece for us to use later. Next, we're going to measure over 8 and 7 eighths and cut. So 8 and 7 eighths, and I'll stick that in my reserves. Okay, so let's take a look at our album, make sure we don't get anything on backwards. Here's our front. I'm just going to rotate it over to the back. We're going to do the same exact thing, and this will be beautiful for our back piece here. So I'm just going to move this so I do not get this on upside down. Upside down. And you can always use this one too on the back if you prefer, but I think I wanted to have some of the muted down colors in that. Something of interest on the back. So score tape. Same thing, around the outside edge like a picture frame. One down the middle, and you know, I think we can get away with one on either side since we don't have anything heavy pulling on the back paper. The front we do because we have that frame. So let's get down our score tape, and then we'll place it together. I have my score tape down, and what I can also do is just squirt a little glue in between that if I need to, and I might. But I'm going to burnish, and then I'm going to remove the score tape. I'm going to shoot some glue definitely down along the bottom, and uh, place this with you. Okay, I've got the score tape backing off. I did scribble a little bit of glue down that, and especially down here to help me. And again, I'm going to double check myself to make sure I'm not placing this upside down. So here I go. And I think right about there. That'll work. And then I'm just going to open this up and burnish. All right, so here is our back. I think it looks beautiful. Let's work on getting for our spine. In your reserves, you will find this. This is the cutting from off here, and I would like to use that. So this should already be 10 and 7 eighths tall. I'm going to double check to make sure memory serves me right, and it is. So now we need to cut it down this way. So looking at your piece like this, we're going to measure over two and a half inches and we're going to cut. Now I may have us trim it down again, but I want to see. To see how that is. So two and a half inches. And do not throw away anything like that. We'll put that in our reserves. So I'll move this out of the way. So I want you to close your spine and take a look. Put this down. When you place this, if you can see a little bit of white border on each side, it doesn't have to be a lot, then it's good. For me, it's a little bit tighter, so I am going to, um, I am going to, on this side, measure over about a sixteenth of an inch and take that off. Just a sliver. And I'll take it off from this side, so I'm going to flip it around. 
If you'd like to take a little bit more off, you can, but I think that's about a sixteenth right there. And that will give me a, just a little bit more. Put that in my reserve. That will give me a little bit more wiggle room as far as getting this down and giving me a better white border. So this is pretty much what it should look like. So if you need to trim yours down, do so. Okay, I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to do score tape around the outside like a picture frame. And I am going to go one down the middle, and then I'm going to take a look. We do have another little Baroque frame that we are going to be placing on that. So I will check to see after I get this down what we need to do. All right, I'm going to go one down the middle. And I think because we do have that Baroque frame that is pretty wide, I'm just going to go here and, and do another one. I don't need to come quite down to the bottom and the top. Just enough to make sure that I catch on the sides of that Baroque frame that's it's going to sit on the other side. So I'll do that. Okay, it's time to place it. I'm going to remove my score tape backing and I'll squirt a little glue at the bottom once again to help me out. So I need to maneuver. For me, I like to do it while it's upright. If it's easier for you to lay it down, just be, be careful because of your edges can be, when you open this up, it can be a little deceiving on where exactly it's going to fall. So for me, I am just going to do it like this, keep my album upright. And now I can open this up and And it's all going to match in. If yours doesn't quite match up with the front and the back, it's okay. Believe me, you're not going to notice that. So this is what it should look like. Looks pretty good to me. I'm going to set that off to the side. I'm going to get a few things ready for us to go. We're going to need our frame. And we're going to need one of our Baroque frames, so I'll get that out. And that was the last one. I had two, but I got one left there. Now I can tell you, me deciding what I want to place underneath this frame has been a huge dilemma because there's so many beautiful prints and panels that would work. So I think what I'm going to have, we're just going to go with my initial gut on this, on what I want to use. So in your paper pack, you will find this print. There's two six by six. We have this, this, and this. On the back, it is green. Once you locate that, let's take off our trim piece. Now, once you've done that, what I would like you to do is stick this back on your paper cutter and we're gonna cut right down the middle there to separate this from those. So I'm gonna be careful where I cut. This piece we're going to put in our reserves. And now what we're going to do is stick this on our paper cutter and we are going to cut right down to divide these two up. This is the one we actually want. This can go back, oh, not pretty. This can go back in our reserves. Now, one thing I do want to do is keep this, so I will chop this part off because I think it's still going to fit, and it is. So just, and I'm going to put this in my reserves for now. I'm going to get this out of the way. Okay, so here we are. This will come down and just fit over to the side. So right here is going to be right underneath this. And then top and bottom, we can just maneuver it like so. What I like to do first is kind of outline this so I know where I need to cut. Okay. So I can kind of see where that is. Now when I cut, I don't have to go in and out around. I just know I need to be on the inside of that. So, and it will get covered. A 
we're going to stick this in our reserves in case we need a little trim piece. So now that I have that, I'm going to place this back and make sure that the paper is completely hidden behind. If I need to do any more trimming, I will, and I see a little over here. All right, I'm going to lay this down and I'm going to start off by placing some glue around here. And now I'm going to press, bring this down closer so I don't get my head in the video, but I'm going to get this on. All right, so there's that. Let's grab our album, and we're going to lay that right there. Now the bird here does get covered up, but I think that that's going to look pretty. So I'm going to get my glue, make sure I get the edges of this resin frame. And this is where I can open up my album so that it is flat. And I'm going to bring it down a little closer to me so I can definitely try to get this on the way I think it should look. Kind of even side to side. Okay, so while that is drying, I'm going to grab the Baroque frame. In your reserves, you will have this piece. And notice you have all of these flowers. We're going to do a cut and I'm going to bring this out. Okay, I think that's pretty good. We're going to look at it where the flowers are down here. We're going to measure over two inches and cut. Two inches. This goes back in our reserves. Now this, all we want is the bottom parts of the flower. So if we want to come back and label this, we could. So I'm just going to lay it down and I'm going to kind of do the same thing I did before. The difference is, whoops, you want something to hit back behind here with this paper. So I think that that is where I need to be. I'm going to lay it down. And now in those little crevices there, I am going to take my pencil and it's going to help me when I start cutting and get right up underneath there. So I have kind of a guide, know where I need to be when cutting this. Let's take a look. So as you can see, that's what's going to help me. So now I'm just going to cut just right on the inside there. Not too far in. But so there's that. Now I'm going to take a look. There is just enough, and I don't see it. Pe the paper peeking through that. For this, I'm just going to put a real fine line around the outside. And then I'm going to place this. This is going to place right here. And this art glitter glue that I used, it will hold this down holds the resin, which is probably already stuck, and this. We'll just give it a little time. So I'm going to place this evenly, side to side, and then I'm going to take a look. Make sure I'm straight. Just center it somewhere down from the top. We look like we're ready to go there. Okay. Let's move on to our next step. So I think I have uh, enough flowers and what I want to do. I don't want to go too overboard with this because I do want to have some of my images stand out as well. You put this in your reserves and this is an opportunity. If you have a saying or something you want to uh, stamp in there, you can. We can glue that down right here without covering up the birds, of course. So that is an option for you to do. If you'd like to do that, I'm going to stick that off to the side. I'm going to try and prop this up. Again, I don't have my glossy accents on my all my flowers. These have it. My leaves do not, so I'll apply that when I'm completely done and ready to move on to the inside. So I'm going to lay these out. Now, if you are using the same leaves as me, I did chop off, and I'm going to show you. This piece here would have gone here. And I just chopped it off real close to the stem. And right here, same thing, chopped it off real close. And then I grabbed another one 
and then this one has a little bit of a stem. And again, we're going to lay this out first before we glue it down. For now, whoops, there goes Sissy. Then there's this, and we're just going to lay this down. We're going to take this one, stems here, and we're just going to arrange that so, like this. That's all we're doing. If you only have the leaves or whatever, you can kind of just throw them down and arrange them. You'll be able to tuck them under the flowers that we place. So I have a slightly larger flower. It's not too big, but if you want to use a bigger one, you definitely can get, it, get away with it on such a large cover. This one I am just going to place, and this one can come out a little bit, right here so that sticks up. Okay, I have these, and then here's one that kind of covers up that stem. Now I have two smaller ones, and these are, like I said, from a different tutorial, but it does have the blues in it. And what I had stamped this was with is like a silver and um, a real light silver, and then I went around the edges with like a blue. But we have one that can go right here, and we have another one that can go right on in here. So that's what the cover would look like, pretty much. So I'm going to start gluing mine down, and I'm just going to kind of remove my flowers and keep my leaves until you have it where you want it. That is an idea. And I'm going to put this off to the side really quick. Let that dry. And I was thinking about adding a couple birds right in the center there. And on the back it is this. What I would like you to do, because I, I want us to be left with some straight cuts, and I know I do want to use some of this, but what you can do is just kind of put a pencil line in between and up and we will cut. When you were doing your pre-cuts, you would have had leftover scrap white cardstock. Now for me, I'll be using a lot of this for my die cuts, but I also am gonna need some for some of the applications that we do. We're gonna cut out and around each one of these, and we're gonna glue it down to white cardstock. So I'm gonna get my other scissors. They're a little bit easier for small fussy cutting, but I'm just gonna fussy cut around him and and up and around this guy too. And I will show you what mine looks like when I am done. Ink, but Now if your feet fell off, you can always glue it back down onto your white cardstock before cutting out around. And I just want to give it a little more, I guess, strength. And even though it's gluing down inside the frame, at least I hope I'm going to be. It was an idea. If we don't use them here, we can use them somewhere else. But we'll glue that down. And again, if your legs kind of got chopped off because they are pretty small, you can always glue you can always glue it down to the white cardstock where they're supposed to be, and you won't be able to tell by the time you're done. I'm gonna get rid of that. Next thing, I am gonna cut out and around, leaving just a little bit of white border around my image, so maybe a sixteenth of an inch. So as soon as I am done with mine, I will show you what it looks like. Okay, I'm gonna show you what mine look like. And some of you that are new to my tutorials may be asking, why do I put myself through the suffering of having to cut around again? <laughs> Sometimes it is to the white cardstock or whatever color black, whatever I'm using, is used to separate the colors from the background to my cutout so it doesn't get lost in the background. Sometimes it's used to stiffen up my pieces. And then other times I use it to clean up my image. It makes it cleaner and that is what I'm using it for right now. And I want it a little bit stiffer. And I want to see how this worked first and how this would play in there. And maybe just have it like that. I think that looks really sweet. Now I can move those down here if I wanted, do something else. But I think I'm going to do that half on, half off the frame. If you would prefer, to stick them up further, you can. But that's what I'm going to do. So his legs are going to come up on the frame. So I'm going to need some time for this to definitely glue down. But I want to get my whole image. If you have little pop-ups, you can do that. So 
tuck him right there and then get the little baby one next to him just for something else. I think that's kind of cute. One thing you can do if it's too plain for you is you can add a little scallop of lace down here. You can add the flat back pearls going around. You can even use your dies, which would look really pretty. And you know what? We might do that as die cutters and line down here and you can line going across. I'm going to think about that. We may do that die cutters. So I am done with the cover for now, but our next step is we are going to be moving on to the inside. And once we get in the inside, we'll be labeling our pages one through eight. So we are on page one here. We are going to take our pencil and mark our pages. But first, I want to go over... Um, again that the people in the beginning who had wrapped their album and it was short and you placed it, it was short and I had you cut a different piece well now if you were good to go but you misplaced it you'll want to recut this piece maybe go a half inch bigger taller eight and a half inches and then add a half inch or so and then section it over there and you can also do that back here so number Here's the inside. We're going to go one. Our next page is a two. We have a three, a four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're going to review our pre-cuts. What we did was we cut two pieces that were five and a quarter by six inches. We called them a back pocket. On each one of these, we laid it down so we were five and a quarter or five and a fourth across. We scored at a half inch and we scored at four and three quarters. Next, we turned it and we are now six inches and we scored at a half inch on both of them. Next, we had two pieces that were four and three quarter by 10 inch. We call these fold outs. On each one of these, we laid it on our scoring board. So we are four and three quarters across. We scored at a half inch and we scored at five eighths. On each one of these, we cut two pieces that were four and a half by five inches. And on each one of these, we laid it so we were four and a half inches across. We scored at a half. We then turned it so we were five inches across. We scored at a half and four and a half on each one. And we called this an FO pocket. The FO stands for fold out. So our fold out pockets. Next, we had one piece. It was a four and one eighth by a six and one eighth, and we just called it a mat. There's no scoring. Next, we had a two inch by seven and one eighth inch piece. We called it a top strap. We laid this on our scoring board, so we are seven and one eighth across. We scored at a half and three quarters, or three fourths, however you want to say it. Next, we had a two by six inch. We called it a bottom strap. We laid this on our scoring board. We are six inches across. We scored at a half and three quarters. That's it. Let's start by finding our decorated paper. All right, I found our decorated paper for our page one and two. So we're gonna cut them together but first you'll locate both of these sheets in your paper pack on the back it looks like this very pretty but we do need the decorated paper I wanted these two so the first thing we want to do is cut off that trim piece I'm gonna double mine up here and we'll do some cuts together so you can kind of get used to how I teach okay so one thing I would like you to do is just double these up. These are here, 
and we are going to rotate our paper like this. And the reason why is because, oop, I still have some white trim on this one. I gotta fix that. Sorry. There we go. Get that out of the way. Okay, I'll start over. <laughs> the way I teach for cutting our decorated paper so that we all have the same leftover scrap pieces, we all have the same paper cut exactly, so that you have an opportunity to make this album exactly as you see it, that I've shown it. I do tend to start over here and say from here, you're gonna measure over this way. And that keeps us consistent, rather than having you cut up, down, left, right, all over the board. So um, we're gonna make our first cut, and I want you to double these up but I would like you to turn your paper so you are now looking at it like this. The lattice is down here on both of your pieces. We're going to measure over 10 inches and cut. So, my blade, by the way, is, um, here, let me, is right here. So 10 inches. Now generally, whatever falls off the side is what's gonna go into our scrap pile. I call our scrap pile our reserves, or our reserve pile. And the reason is, is I've always called it that because we're reserving these pieces to use at a later time in the tutorial. By the way, your trimmings off the page, like your little heartfelt trim, you can just throw those away. We won't be needing those but do keep all scraps other than that. Okay, so right now what I would like you to do is looking at this one, the lattice is over here. We're gonna flip this one upside down. Now the lattice is over here and we're just gonna double these up. We're going to measure over eight and a quarter and cut. So I'm gonna show you again. Lattice is here this is here, eight and a quarter. I think I got these pretty straight on there. And cut. These pieces here we're going to stick in our reserves. So now what we have is these two pieces, just like that. This piece right here, I want you to set off to the side. This is gonna be for our page two. So I'm not gonna put this in my reserves. I'm just gonna set it off to the side. That way I don't accidentally cut into it. All right. We have two pre-cuts and they are called the back pocket. Now I've already cut on one of these, but notice what you have here is, and you'll still have down below here, is your score lines are on the side and you have one in the bottom. If you notice in the corner, it will look with your score lines like a square and we're gonna cut those out. Now this one, I accidentally misdid my um, scoring. So I'm gonna make sure I have this. I'm, uh, I know exactly where my score line, which one I need to be on. Instead of cutting a new pay, uh, piece, you know. Okay, so score line here and here, only one. Like I said, I messed up on mine. And then you'll have one across the bottom. Down here you see where it makes a square. We're just gonna cut out that square. And we will do that over here. So mine looks kind of funky uh, because of the fact that I misscored. But this is what it turns out looking like. Okay, once you have that, we're gonna fold on our score lines and we're folding towards us. And we're gonna need our glue. What we're going to do is fold in the sides of this pocket. Here's our little flap. Now the reason why I say to fold in the side is right here on the edge that is create an imaginary line going straight down so that you don't get glued too far over. We're just going for the corners here. And then once you have it, we just pull up. So 
so there is our first one. So if you are new to making this style pocket or making pockets at all, I'm going to show you this. I'm going to flip it over. This little ledge down here, that's always the bottom of the pocket. That way you can still get something in and it does not fall down through the bottom. Okay, let's do this again. I got to get mine on the correct score line here. I'll fold in the side so I can see how far over with my glue. And then I'll pull it up. I got mine just a little bit off on my scoring. I'm not going to worry about it. I think they're both about the same. Yeah, they are. Okay, so we have our pockets. And what we're going to do is we're going to glue them down like this. And here is the bottom of the pocket. This would be the opening. So we're going to use our glue for this. It's easier to maneuver. And we're just putting it on that flap. Again, opening is here. And if you would like to, before you lay this down, grab your other one and just kind of see. You want a little space in between and we'll come in probably about three quarters from the side. We just want to try and get that on straight. It does not have to be perfect, that's for sure. So I'm just going to look to make sure I'm straight up there. I think I am. And then we're going to use our tool and we're going to burnish. And you can pucker these a little bit. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. So that you can get more in your pocket. Okay, flip it over again. That is here, and we're going to glue this one down. Oh, this goes down this way, and we're just going to kind of line it up with how we got it here and leave a little space in between. And I think that's pretty good. And I don't want to get my head in the video, but I think that that's pretty straight. If it's not, you'll probably see that, but I'm not too concerned. Before we place our decorative paper on here, we're going to start working on our fold out on there. So you are going to have these two, the four and three quarter by 10 inch. Now you're going to want to have your score line over here. This is our right one. So locate it. You see your score line. Just put R for right side. If you have to turn your piece upside down, like this to get your score line over here because this is a hinge for the left. Do so and just write an L if it helps you. So we're going to fold on both of those score lines. I do teach for beginners so those of you that have been following me um, be patient. At one time you were new as well and needed the information that I'm giving out as we go. So you already know what we're planning on doing here. So I'm just folding and I'm using my tool to crease. Let's hook the one, the one with the, the right side on so our hinge is off to the right. Notice you will have two score lines that you can see. There's an inside score line and an outside one. I want you to pinch and crease on the outside one. You will still be able to see your other score line. We're going to hook this on back behind and it should fit top and bottom perfectly because it's the same size as our decorative paper. Okay, once you have that fit and you know you have it straight, top and bottom, I want you to pinch it. I This is such a big piece, I'm going to use two hands. And I'm going to flip it over and continue to put pressure down so my piece does not slip. If you feel it slip, realign it. So now that I have this, I'm going to keep a hand down and the other one I'm just going to gently fold back that flap. And we're going to put glue. Now, be mindful of your glue. If you get a lot of glue towards here, you're going to quickly 
after we put this down, you're going to open it up because that glue will seep to the other side on your decorative paper and it will glue your fold out shut. So really quick, we'll just do a quick burnishing and we're going to open it up and we're going to check right here. If you see or feel any glue, get it up. Okay, for now, we're just going to keep that closed and we're not going to fold on that other score line just yet. We'll grab our left side. So here's the hinge. You have an inside score line and an outside. On the outside one, we are going to pinch and crease. You'll still be able to see your other score line. And we're going to slip that right back behind as well. Make sure that it is lining up with your other one. And I think that's pretty good. So I have mine in place. It's all the way in and I'm going to use two hands and I'm going to flip this over keep my pressure and hold it down. Now a good way to, to check to see if you're straight is when you open this, I like mine, mine, mine slips so I can see it is off and all I'm going to do here is slide this back and I'm going to double check this. Mine slipped. Making sure that they are even so it's just a good way to check yourself rather than having uh, an issue. There we go. I think I'm good. I'm gonna pinch and hold that really good there. So I'm going to check myself again. I'm pretty straight there. Now comes the glue. Now to burnish and to double check. Make sure I did not get any glue in there. And I didn't. So now that we have that, you can go ahead, you can see your other score line there. You can push on it and then push in. And what that's going to create is a spacing. See how it's kind of flat on the side? It's, it's creating that space. And we're going to do that over here too. So I just kind of crease on it and push it in. The idea of this is these are just going to come together like that. So check to make sure you've got your spacing. All right, we have this, so let's open it up. We do have to get our pockets on the outside, but for now, let's work on the inside. In your reserves, you will have this piece. Remember, we cut out a little piece here. On the back, it is this pretty print. The first thing that I would like us to do is we're gonna turn this sideways measure over five and three eighths and cut. I'm gonna grab this. So five and three eighths. And I'm gonna cut. This piece I'm putting back in my reserves. Now what we're gonna do is two cuts. We're gonna measure over four and one eighth and cut We'll measure over again four and one eighth and cut. So let's do that. Four and one eighth. There's my first piece. Four and one eighth. Very simple. This piece we'll just put in our reserves for right now. Get that out of the way. So now all we have to do is turn these over and see, we're verifying right now, we're not quite gluing yet. And those look really good. Okay, if you are not die cutting, you can go ahead and center this. You will have a white border over here from where the opening is, white and white. You can glue that down. And you can also do the same here. Now for the die cutters, before we glue ours down, what you'll want to do is die cut this. And the piece on that that we are using, real simple, is this. So we will put it on some white cardstock and we will die cut it. Now, after you die cut it, they'll kind of be still attached, or they may not, right here. Just kind of take them apart. So once you've done that, you can just double these up so that they match up. And we're gonna 
On this particular one, because we have the side, I'm going to grab my paper cutter. So I've got these, and I'm going to double these up, and I'm going to cut off this little bit over here. So I got these looking the same, and I'll show you, and I'm all doubled up. So all I did was take off a little bit there, as you can see. Let's measure over four and one eighth and cut. So four and one eighth, I'm down here, and I'm going to cut. And if you want to line yours up a little bit better, you can. I am not going to worry about it. I think it'll look good either way. Now what we can also do is just cut down this part. I'm just going, it's not going to, it's not going to show. So we just want to leave about a half inch there. And honestly, I'm just going to take my scissors. It does not have to be straight because it, it is going to get hidden. And we're going to glue that down. So I'm just going to put some glue over here. And I'm going to make sure I don't glue this shut. So I'll just bring it up to the edge. And then I'm going to glue this on over it. Die cutters, I am using the um, American Crafts 80 pound. If you prefer a heavier weight for your trim, you can use 110 pound. I am happy with what I got here. As long as I can get it on straight, I'll be happy. There we go. Okay, same thing over here. All right, I'm gonna grab this back out. You should have this long skinny piece in your reserves. On this side, it looks like this. I think that's 12 inches. It is. And it is about one and one eighth. What we're going to do on this is make two cuts. We're gonna measure over four and one eighth and cut four and one eighth and cut. So let's do that. We're going to break up some of the small little flowers a bit by using this trim and then this can go in our reserves. So this will make it break up some of the, the small flowers and you can put one here, glue it down, and you can glue the other one down just like that. Or you can do vice versa if you'd rather go like this. And for us, I just think it looks good. You could use this area for a pitcher. It goes off from the other. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. In your reserves, you will have these two pieces. We have the cut up uh, the cuttings from with the lattice, and we have this in there as well. We're gonna double those up. Let me get this back out. So again, I have this here, this here. Measure over nine and five eighths and cut. So nine and five eighths. I think that's it right there. Make sure these are straight. These little pieces put in your reserve. I know they look like nothing, but we may need them. All we're going to do with these two pieces is we're going to center it. I got a pencil. We're going to center it on each one of these panels. And if you are new, you're going to be mindful you have a score line right here. Okay? You're going to be mindful to leave a white space away from it. So what you're going to want to do is maybe put a little pencil mark. You can see it better, one that you can erase, and then you can see how to center this. So you have the same amount of white cardstock showing between here and your paper, over here, 
and then top and bottom. And I'm going to erase this now. I don't need it. And we're going to do that with both sides. So let's get both of these down. And we're just using glue. I'm trying to get it on straight. And then we're going to burnish that down really good. Okay, this one. I'm going to use my other tool here. Double check my burnishing. If you have any glue seeping out, it's a good time to wipe it up. I think that looks really good. All right, we're going to go ahead and close this. And we're going to get our paper for this. In your paper pack, you will have this beautiful print. And on the back, it looks like this. Let's go ahead and take off that trim piece here. So that nobody gets confused and we all have the same leftover pieces, we're going to look at this side. Okay, we're going to turn it sideways so that this is down over in the corner. We're going to measure over nine and three quarters and cut. This little piece would be wonderful for a little tag. Oh, that's pretty. We'll probably be using it though. We do have another one. Okay, we can turn it over now. You will notice that over here we have some flowers coming up and then the majority is up here. Now I want to center something so we're going to make some cuts here. The first one is we are going to measure over one and five eighths and cut. Let me get that out of the way. One and five eighths. So all I ended up doing is cutting off that much and this little piece we are going to put in our reserves. Okay, we're looking at it now so that this is still across the top. This is down here. We're going to make two cuts. We're going to measure over three and fifteen sixteenths and cut. Measure over three and fifteen sixteenths again and cut. Any of you that just have a standard ruler and you're not real sure about that, what that is, a sixteenth. Okay, so here's four. Oh, come into focus for me. There we go. Here's three and seven eighths. Here's four. It's the line right in between three and seven eighths and four. And if you have no line, just go in between on that. So three and fifteen sixteenths. And I'm going to do that again. This slender piece we'll put in our reserves. What did I do there? I did not fold correctly. There we go. Get that where it needs to be. Okay, we have these pieces here. So you'll want to make sure that this one's on the left and this one's on the right because then they connect. And all we're going to do is first lay it down to verify our cuts are good and we will be centering. So you'll have a white border all the way around. And line this one up with the top of that and we're good to go. That looks good. And then I'll burnish carefully. And you can push back against that to flatten it out again. And then all you have to do is push it back. But it helps to get a good burnish. And then we'll wipe up any glue that has seeped out. Push that back. And we'll get this one down. Okay, we have two FO fold out pockets. And once again, whoops, I have everything stuck to me. We have score line here, score line here. I've got adhesive. I need to clean these. And then one going across the bottom, it creates a square. And we're going to cut out those squares. Me, I am going to double mine up. It saves me time. So we'll just do that. 
Oh, I'm shaking again. My apologies. I'm all over the board. <laughs> I'll get that the best I can. Okay, once you've done that, flip them over and we're just folding towards us. So my sides are in. And we're going to place that right there. There we go. Same here. I'm not sure if I mentioned it. Today's a new day. So I can't really remember what I said previously as far as small talk. Some of you may not like the small talk, but those of you that have been following me um, know I have three dogs. Sissy, the white one. Sasha, the golden retriever. And she's redhead. And um, then Tanner. And uh, Tanner passed away early February. Uh, yeah, he um, had another one of those grand mal seizures and it, it did something to him. It, it um, put him in a state of, um, we rushed him to emergency and he was suffering and the vet told us his quality, quality of life was not going to be there and John and I had to make the decision to help him over the rainbow. So that was kind of devastating for me and my husband. So Tanner, okay, this one. Here we go. First, make sure that if you place this down at the bottom, the opening is this way. I gotta wash my hands. And we're gonna glue this pocket down. And we're gonna do the same on the other side. We just want to double check, especially when you're new. You can get a little overwhelmed, and the pause button is your best friend, even for longtime scrappers. They use the pause button a lot, but we just want to make sure that the opening is at the top. So we're just going to do that, and we can push in just a little bit, and then we can burnish. In your paper pack, the very last sheet is this. Let's take off the trim piece. I think these colors are going to look really good. I can put that in the trash. So once again, we're going to look at it so we can actually see what we're doing here. We're going to hold it like this. We're going to measure over three and seven eighths and cut. So three and seven eighths. We'll put that in our reserves. So now we're going to make two cuts. It's three and fifteen sixteenths again. Cut three and fifteen sixteenths. So once again, that is in between the four and, and the three and seven eighths. There's one. And here's the other. And we have these that we can put in our reserves. All right, we're going to flip these over, see if we can kind of tell which way they need to go. But this should fit, and if you bring it down, you should leave yourself a white lip here. Now, die cutters, what I thought I might do is place a couple of these. Let's see. So if you die cut these, and I'm going to show you the easiest way. First, what you will do is you will die cut one of these on white cardstock. Okay? Now, once you've done that, you come back in, and I did mine separately, but you come in, you take this plate away, and then you put these in the spots. So it looks like this, and then you would just put it right in the white and die cut. I did mine individually. I did not die cut this and this all at once. My die cutter did not like that. It didn't cut all the way through, but it sure did when I did separate this first, then this and this. And what I want to do, 
Well, first, those of you that are not die cutting, you can go ahead and glue your pieces down. Those of us that did die cut, I'm just going to lay this right on over and try to center that right on in there. And then once I have that, I can make my pencil mark where I need to cut. And then what I can do is just double this up because I know it's going to be the same for that too. And I will cut. You can cut by hand or you can cut on your, your paper cutter. Oh, look at me go. I'm going to try doing by hand. Keep these together straight. Yeah, this may not have been a good idea for me to hand cut, but now that I've done it, let's do it. There we go. So I'm just going to glue one right on down to here. And I'll glue one right down like that. And I think that'll look really pretty. So let's die cutters, once you have yours down, now we can glue these down to the front. I think that's going to look really good when we're done here. All right, let's get our mat out. And in your reserves, you will find this. All we're going to do is cut that and divide these pieces where it needs to be. This piece goes back in my reserves. This piece here, if we were to lay it down, it should center in there, giving us a white border. Let's get that down. Kind of center it on in there. So one thing about my tutorials is the part one always goes slower. And then once we get to part two, it picks up the speed. That's for sure. The reason why is because uh, with pockets and I'm going very slow so that everyone has an opportunity to learn. All right, so make sure your your sides are where they're kind of, you feel it feels flat. They are in, they are matched up. Let's grab our top and bottom strap. We're gonna work with the top strap first. And we're gonna fold on those score lines. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the hinge at the top. This is the top strap. And on the top score line, we pinch. So we'll still be able to see this other score line. And we are gonna slide it back behind. So you can push this down, it won't hurt anything, but we're going to center that so it's centered. And then we're going to hold it so it should be centered in there. Make sure it's on. Pull that back and we'll place some glue and burnish. So that's the easy one to get on this other bottom strap, it's not hard to get on, but I'm going to show you a technique I like to use to get it on straight. So now that you have this, and you should still be able to see your other score line there. The hinge is at the bottom, and we're looking at the bottom score line, and we're going to pinch and crease, so again, we can see that other score line. We are going to slide that back behind, like we did before. And we're just going to shimmy this until it lines up with this one. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of look. I'm going to hold that flat. It looks like it's going to be just fine. So I have a hold of that. And if you get if you get it on a little crooked, our magnet can help uh, get that back where it needs to be. So I have that. I'm being careful. And again, if I need to, I will definitely use the magnet to help straighten this up a bit. So that's on pretty good. Now we can kind of push up a little and push down on those little score lines. So what's going to happen is it creates a spacing here. And here's the top. See how it does that? All right, we're going to have to get into our magnets now. 
Give me a moment and I will get these off. Oh, hey, that came off pretty easy. I didn't have to struggle at all. We're going to need a plus and a minus. So for this one, what we're going to do is actually lay the bottom. We're going to flip up the top. We're going to lay the bottom magnet first on this. So I'm just grabbing a minus. Now when I do this, I'm, I'm going to come down. I'm going to leave about a half inch between the top of this white cardstock and to the top of my magnet, but I'm centered in between. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place the mate. I'll take that off. And this is where you can bring this down. Make sure you leave yourself that. And this is where you can guide it to be straight without pulling it flat. So I'm going to do the best I can here. Line that up and press. Now, because your magnet, if you're using the magnets that I'm using, the basic gray, they are very strong. If I was to sit here and try to pull straight up when they're magnet to magnet without paper over them, it could tear it back off my piece or warp this. So the easiest way is just to grab a hold of this and shimmy it to the side and it will lift up. In your reserves you're going to have this piece. On the back it looks like this. Now we're going to be cutting this and one piece is going to be for this and one piece is going to be for the top side. We're going to flip it to where the flowers are over here. Measure over four and seven eighths and cut. So we want this piece too and we want this one. This one's set off to the side. Now this one we're going to place right here centered and it should go over that magnet. Okay, we're just going to center it in there. And you want the little green scallops on this side. So you want to make sure that you get the top really good here with some glue and your sides. Especially the top edge because that's what we're going to push down to make sure it gets down right here. And again, we are centering that. We're leaving a white spacing here, here, here. And I'm just going to. Okay, let's close that up. Now, this piece is going to look short. And the reason why is this comes on over it. So it, you won't be able to tell. But we're going to line this up. We're going to bring it up to the top, leaving a white space, the same amount of white space up here that you left down here. And we're going to glue that down. There we go. The next thing is, is you're going to want to get some scrap cardstock. So here's a scrap piece. I'm going to slide this back behind. This piece we're going to center with some glue on here. Okay. So right here. And we can make that into a little tuck if you wanted. But we're going to get down here and see what that gives me first. Okay, and I'm going to center this. I'm going to unlatch it carefully. Come here. Open this up. And I'm going to carefully burnish. I can feel where that magnet is. That up. And I'm going to turn this sideways so that it's easier. Here's the bottom. And where to get some paper for that. This is a good one to use because it's going to match on in with this. So looking at it like this, uh, your flowers are here. Measure over one and three quarters and cut. Okay, notice that the writing, if we were to glue it down like this, the writing would be upside down. So what we're going to do on this is we'll turn it, the flowers are here, we're going to measure over four and what was that, four and seven eighths? 
Okay, here's our pocket. This one we are going to center and make sure that the writing is going the right way. So it looks like the scalps are going to be over here. We'll get that down. And once again, and don't get it on your score line, of course. Just kind of center that in there as best you can. Okay, that one's done. Doesn't that look pretty? We're, we also have another piece to the puzzle here. Aha! <laughs> this. Grab this out of your reserves. We'll need that. And the scallops should be here. We'll come up a little bit from that score line and we will glue this down. And I'm going to glue that down leaving a white border. Page one is complete. Now I want to add flowers, but I am going to wait until I get page two in. And right now we can prep this, but we're not going to put it in our book until page two is in. And if you're new, I will tell you why when we get to that point. So all we need to do now is grab our score tape. We're going to go all the way around like a picture frame, one down the middle. Let's just go one on each side of that middle point and we can squirt some glue in. So the back of yours should look like this. Do not put any glue. We're not ready to put this in our book yet. But I think that looks beautiful. Page one is complete. We are now going to move on to page two.